Welcome to our new car, courtesy of the CARS program, or Cash for Clunkers as it's been called. In spite of a problematic start, this was a, a very good deal for those that qualify. And with little effort and research, the program made a new c car possible for us. Let me start by saying that my roommate and I are on a, a fixed income due to disability. Our vehicle was still serviceable, but was pretty old and inefficient and worth very little on the retail market. Uh, the first thing we did after hearing about the program was to check our eligibility. And to do that, we went to cars.gov website, www.cars.gov. And be sure that you're at a, at a .gov site. That makes sure that you're dealing with a, a government site and not some scam artist out there, which on the internet you have to worry about every now and then. There's a list of qualifications for your clunker. Uh, it has to be less than 25 years old, still drivable, uh, has to have been street legal paperwork wise for the last year, meaning registered and insured if there's an insurance requirement in your state, and, and in drivable condition. Uh, there's a few other rules. Uh, the, the car needs to get uh, combined gas mileage of on, on the new combined MPG of 18 or less. And the idea behind the, uh, the program is to remove old gas guzzlers, get them off the road and replace them with safer, more fuel efficient vehicles that don't pollute, don't put out all that CO2 and, and other things. And to help stimulate some demand for the auto industry which is hurting due to the recession. Our 1991 Wrangler uh, met all the requirements, so we read the details. They're available uh, as PDF files. You can read uh, all or, or part of the, the law, the final rules, and, and uh, all those things are available on the site. And once we've done that, we set out to uh, find our new ride in, in uh, something that we liked and could afford. We, uh, we had a, a very limited amount of money to spend. So we needed to get maximum rebate for minimum cost. And uh, armed with our research, we selected a, a few cars to go out and test drive. Uh, the Honda, Hyundai Accent, uh, Toyota Yaris, uh, Kia Forte, Chevy Cobalt, and uh, Nissan Versa. We settled on the Versa base model sedan after checking everything out. We like the size. It, it feels like a midsize inside. And its uh, handling seemed to be superior. And our insurance company gave it one of its highest ratings, its highest safety ratings. Uh, it's a five-speed standard tranny. Shifts very smooth. It's got a variable valve engine. It's got a lot of horsepower, a lot of pep for a small car. The others were okay, but all of them had uh, a drawback that, that was one feature or another that we didn't like. And just as a tip for future car designers, uh, back windows, uh, windows in the back seat that don't open kind of suck. Uh, cars that, that you cannot get anti-lock brake systems on are, are not uh, high on our list. They're just anti-lock brakes are a really nice feature for cars. Anyway, we, uh, we, we picked out our, our model and, and color. And then we went home and waited for the rules to come out July 24th. You folks won't have to because they're already up and running. And uh, after you make your best deal, keep in mind that when you're trading in your vehicle this time, the dealer doesn't have to sell that trade-in to, to recoup his money. He's going to get paid from the government, and he's going to get paid by the dismantlers, the salvage people, uh, some funds, a little, a little fee, for handling the, the little bit that they have to do. So, you know, you're, you're kind of in a strong position because you're dealing with cash, although the delay takes a little bit of that away, and I'll get to that right now. Most of these problems, I think, have been, have been rectified, but as with a lot of things that the government fires up, if they're too popular too fast, they get overwhelmed, and that's kind of what happened with the with the uh, the cars folks we were a little uh, we were on the whole pretty happy with our, our dealer uh, the only little f 
flaw in, in our dealings with them was they tried to, to sell us all of that extended warranty gap insurance, life insurance, and, you know, tried to sell us $3,000 worth of insurance on a $13,000 car. And that seemed a little excessive. Uh, for us, extended warranties are, are a bad deal. And uh, trying to sell me them kind of insults my intelligence. But we struck a deal, produced the paperwork, and then we waited for the website to approve us. And that was, that was really a bummer because it took 10 days. And the, the dealers were, were uh, supposed to front the cars to people. But because the program was new, they were all worried they weren't going to get paid. So they, they, uh, they held our car for the 10 days. So we were kind of bummed about that. And that took a little of the luster off of the, the new car experience. But we eventually got our car. They eventually solved the problem. And so now we get a new fuel-efficient car that's much safer for us and everybody else on the road. Uh, the state of California got a, a nice little chunk of sales tax. Uh, Mike and the guys at the local Nissan dealer sold 13 cars in a weekend. When they hadn't been doing squat uh, the rest of the, the month, so they're, uh, they're all happy. Uh, some of our uh, car was domestic production. Uh, it was assembled in, in Mexico, so it was a NAFTA baby. But uh, North American parts and, and labor, so that's good for that. And, and we did look at the GM. We just couldn't afford the Ford or the GM entry-level products. They were a little bit pricier than we could pay. And that's just our particular situation. But with the new funding approved through the Senate and signed by the President, and the kinks in the system seem to be pretty much solved, this would seem to be one portion of the Recovery Act that is working for the average American.